Hey, welcome to Butcher Bay Rejects. I'm Mark. I'm Greg. What's new this week, nerds? How you doing, bud? How you doing? Butcher Bay all day, sir. Butcher <laughs> Bay all day. We got a lot to cover because you did some watching. So uh-huh. we're going to jump and discuss the big, big finale of House of Dragon, episode yep. 10, called The Black Queen uh, and or your favorite episode, or sorry to say show, an Arkina <laughs> 5. This one wasn't that bad. Survivor 43, episode 6, Mergatory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star Wars Tale of the Jedi, I think you covered the first three episodes, Watch correct? a couple, yeah. But you did, however, watch what I recommended last week, all of Welcome to Wrexham, starring Ryan R- Reynolds and Rob McElhenney yep. on Disney+. Plus. So we'll get into what you thought of that. And uh, we'll do about the, la- the latest in uh, entertainment news. So, what do you think, House of Dragon? Well, <coughs> excuse me, um... You know what? It was uh, I was expecting uh, like rage and battles, but we got nice, tight, calm, and really strategic thinking from uh, Rhaenyra. Uh, up until okay, now yeah, up until that moment. Yeah, uh, but that, that and, it ended on that moment, so it was kind of like yes. But there was one thing uh, Vizari says like uh, early on in one of the beginning uh, episodes that. Uh, controlling a dragon is an illusion and oh boy yeah we realize yeah. <laughs> you you may think you've tamed that dragon but uh which is yeah. why i'm calling this episode how to untrain your dragon <laughs> yeah no <laughs> kidding like the anim- animated show but um yeah the uh, yeah what an episode well did you find it odd though and like kind of like sending a kid to get milk uh, like saying i'm gonna send you to you know to the bronx Six streets down to the worst part of, the, of New York, sending your kid Lucere's, you know, to the to the um, I forget what house it was to it was you know drum up support. Yeah, did you think he was a little too young to go or like? Well, you probably knew that in there he's not coming back, right? Like I did. I mean, and I don't know the book, so I was. Did you think he was going to come back? Honestly, yeah, I did. I mean, oh, you did. Well, okay. I mean, if you looked at what she was saying, right? Um, he was going to honor a prince of another family there were there, yes and as a messenger he was a, and, and he showed that right there's no fighting on my house this boy is a messenger and he will not be yes but don't you harmed. think the moment he saw vagar uh outside he should have left did you think that or because vagar was, was right there. well he still he had saw... he still had a duty to do right okay you All know right. and he he wanted to prove to his mother that he could do uh do his duty uh, I mean, he had a big conversation with her earlier that the episode, you know, he not thinking that he could do it. And she, you know, gave him all her confidence in him. So when he saw that, well, he had no choice in himself but to proceed. You know, taking into account that Baratheon's going to honor him as a messenger and also as part of the royal family and so on and so forth that no harm would come to him and by all means he did honor that but well, yeah it, yeah <laughs> well but, prince Aemon one wanted to uh, wanted to take his eyes baratheon says no 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 not here and then of course nice stormy sequence right yeah. clouds and uh yeah how much how huge was that dragon compared to yeah boy did boy did vagar not like getting fire blown in his face um but here's credit to to Eamon. he knew like you know that 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 tiktok video it was then there that he knew he fucked up so you could see in his face like he probably wanted to scare the kid maybe maim him a little but he was not thinking that his dragon would ignore him disobey his orders yeah and chop up like you could tell in his face like oh no i'm the one that actually started the war exactly like, you could see no it no you can see it clearly in his face, definitely <laughs> he yeah. you know no no shots had been fired Nothing is yeah. everything was still on the, on the diplomatic thing and talk about like you know a little bit of of recall with Venerys showing up when when Damon and, and Otto were having a little discussion on the bridge and Venerys shows up on dragon again yeah but this time to turn around <laughs> and speak to Otto you know like yeah yeah she was the the voice of reason she didn't want to escalate it she wanted to she make was the smart woman in the room yeah yeah, Prince Damon's like, no, my kid's not going to be a cup bearer. You can, you know, we'll draw swords right now. And then she shows up and calms it. But until they 
you know, chopped her son in half. Well, that's all going out the window. Because I, I think I really think until then, like her and um, what's her name? Uh, well, Allison. Well, Allison yeah, Allison could have sat that, down and yes, like, really. That, that's just why she it sent out. her that that page out of the book is a callback to the first episode when they were reading in the garden and and yep. Rainier didn't want him to learn her lesson. So that was actually that page and that calmed her down and everything was was gonna be great until <laughs> chomp yeah. yeah until uh godzilla versus i guess tiny mothra went at it there um but uh wow yeah that I was uh, that was that was godzilla versus scooby-doo let's yeah, really yeah. let's really put it <laughs> well, I, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I thought tiny mothra maybe i guess it's still too big <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> Yeah, when, you know, bring a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, okay, but you now, know, but he how, did. He, he, how did you he did feel a, about that whole birth sequence? The whole what sequence? Birth sequence. Oh yeah, well, what a bad day for her, right? She loses her child, stillborn, and then realizes she's been usurped. Um, you know, um, yikes. Uh, yeah, they really laid it on heavy the birthing stuff this yeah. season, right? I mean, I I think I'd prefer the gratuitous sex as, as the old <laughs> show had. But how how cool was it, Rainey's? Rainey's was basically there for two coronations in one day. How cool was that? <laughs> she's in King's Landing, you know, for the green one, and then yeah. she's in seeing the black the black council, the black house crown, and and what's his name? One of the twins brought Viserys' crown. He stole the crown and yeah, whisked that, it out uh, that, that's King's that, Landing you know, for baller her. move right there. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get special treatment. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, unfortunately, it's going to be a good two years before we see this uh, second season. But, um, <laughs> As but I, I liked the man overall. Yeah, I liked it. It uh, kind of made up for the finale. Mm-hmm. Game of Thrones with me. And, yeah. Um, well, that's just it. It was, you know, there was, there was excitement. There was a little bit of like, oh, my God. But it wasn't over the top. And it really, really set up for the shit's going to hit the fan in the first episode of season two yeah they did that lingering tracking shot on her at the end she's got the face grief and anger all oh her, yeah you know, like no it's on now you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, now now you did it you woke us it's on like ahead. donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yep it's gonna be and of course there's that scene where you saw damon singing to a dragon so i had to look that up so that's vermithor he's like just a skosh under vagar okay his uh, his dragon rider who's still alive this moment is 100 years old his uh, other name is the Bronze Fury. So Damon's no dummy. He knew the the war's going to be fought in the air, right? So yeah. he was he's slowly sweetening him, going to try and ride him, you know, cuz yeah, he's just a hair under Vagar in terms of size. Yeah, so I mean, it, it all then at that point it all becomes comes down to the rider, you know. Yeah, and who, and and Damon already did the math. We have more than they do. They got this one here. This uh, we yeah, we outnumber them. So yeah, he <laughs> He's looking for a quick. Yeah, you put this, three so. big ones on Vagar, and then you know he becomes cooked. Yeah, yeah, he did the math. Unfortunately, I mean, as we know, only a little bit. It doesn't end that fast. This no. war goes on for <laughs> quite some years. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I I liked it, liked it very much. Yeah, 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 for sure. And to go into a show where you don't like very much, <laughs> but it had a little something this episode. I don't know what they were thinking. Putting uh, Andy Circus in here. I've had to read one conspiracy theory after another for an entire week about Snoke. Okay, why did you do that, guys? No, it could still be Snoke. No, no, no. Snoke never started off in jail. Oh my God! I don't know what you thought of like what anyone. Why, why couldn't they take anyone else? Okay, <laughs> to be the head prisoner. I mean, no, no. Did you hear? Do you read any of this? Or no, didn't come, I, didn't come your way. Okay. I don't. But care. you could see. <laughs> no, but you can see how the Star Wars Star Wars nerds ran with this, right? As soon as they saw him, Why, you was could it, tell. Andy Serkis was Snoke. Yes. Oh, okay. Well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Yeah. It wasn't capture, Snoke. And, was yeah, but the thing is, Snoke was uh, was a clone of Palpatine, wasn't he? I know, but that didn't still stop him, dude. <laughs> I don't care. They. I know you don't. Neither do I. But I'm like, when they did that, I went, oh no. And sure enough, I was right. I went on right after that episode aired and went, yep, here we go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> no, I don't care either, but you know, I just thought you could people who are anyone. worried about that have way too much time on their hands. 
Well, you know them Star Wars nerds. I count myself among you, but I'm just not that into it as you guys are, unfortunately. Uh, but we do get to see a very futuristic prison, which makes me think that someone's going to copy this in the not near future. Like, how genius. Everyone's barefoot. They're on a floor. They control the floor, right? Yeah. The only thing saving you are these rubber boots, which Cassie and Andor obviously figured out. You know what? That, so I don't, that's, I don't know that's, if he escapes or if he, I don't know how you would escape from that prison, but. <laughs> see, for me, that's just a. a Star Wars version of Air One Prison from Face Off. Yeah. yeah where everyone is magnetically sealed to the floor. Yeah, they had those, yeah, those boots, right? That's yeah, exactly. So it's kind of yeah. like, okay, you're either going to get electrocuted or you're stuck to the floor. One of the two. Yeah. They haven't yeah. copied Air One yet, so. But I think that easy, goes against uh, a, few, a few human rights or whatever. Yeah, very, very easy to commit suicide just step off your bunk in the middle of the night when the floor is red, right? And <laughs> Mm. You know, yeah, but uh, it's it's not instantaneous though. It's not. Uh, no, there's some there, there's, agonizing there's, seconds. Yeah, where there's you're there's agony fried involved from the inside. <laughs> <coughs> but basically, we see uh, Forrest Whitaker return. Yeah, we saw Guerrero, so we haven't seen him since Rogue One. So it's kind of cool. So now we figure out why. Um, so the whole story comes together. Why the, those two girls, Cinta, Cinta are trying to kill Andor is because they're afraid he's going to reveal who Axis is. Because we had a little bit of, uh, we saw the reunion of, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into that blonde, uh, that blonde Imperial officer now. I know I hate myself. The, um, the one that's, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Exactly. Yeah. She's, because um, now she's interrogating, uh, well, De oh yeah, Dedra. So Dedra picks up Cyril mm -hmm. and kind of have a meet cute and they're all a, obnoxious but there's she actually learns that he signed this report under duress and i i think they will team up eventually what do you even though she turned him down flat do you think they'll be uh oh i think of, eventually he's going to have a nugget of information that's going to be even well more... he did say i know what he sounds like i mean i got a good look but i you know that was his uh his carrot i know what he sounds like you don't so take me with you and you know if we round some people up yeah. Just have to have him say this phrase. <laughs> you are my fire. No, um, <laughs> that's from um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, yeah, yeah. But overall, I felt it was an objectionable as last week's episode, and stuff was happening. It it was, but it's still just yeah. I know, but we're getting we're getting close to the end there. Yeah, you only have four more, less than five. <laughs> you know, I mean. St you know, Star Wars. Stop looking at characters to try to. They're not if they're not in the big ones. Don't don't bother. Yeah, you know, Mandalorian was cool because there was an a uh, you know association to Boba Fett. Well, it's just a awesome show, right? <laughs> well, no, they they did a good job of writing it. They did a good job of of um, creating this character out of something that we had an. I guess you could say an affinity to, mm -hmm. and then making it its own, especially like bringing baby Yoda into it and, you know, little Grogu and all that. So it, it de definitely, um, it definitely endeared us to those characters where, and, or who gives a shit? Exactly. Let's end on that. Okay. <laughs> Andor. Who gives a shit? Okay. Survivor. Yep. Episode six, of course. My girl Ellie's no more. They kicked off. The, the last schemer hot, got hot schemed. How classic. You know the moment that she says at the beginning, I'm paraphrasing, you know what? I've got Survivor. I'll figure it out. This game's easy. You know she's going home. I don't oh, care yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what clever editing you're doing. And of course, those words would come back to bite her in the ass. Oh. Because of Gabler saying, and it wasn't, she didn't actually go through the bag. The um, the Asian girl did, Janine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't give up her friend, you know, she wouldn't say. So I, I you know, give her some credit, but in Survivor, it's, uh, you know, yeah, kill or be is, killed, thing, right? Thing, I mean, <laughs> Janine could have saved her at any time. So if I feel yeah, like you're going to, well, I'll play that, well, I'll play yes. that for you. And you can well, see I did. her because kind of like. She waved her off. No, I did read the article because on Entertainment Weekly, Dalton Ross sits down with each person and says, what were you thinking? So she said, no, she did offer. But if she goes, if you look, I waved her off during the, you know, the last before Jeff reads the votes because I thought I was safe. Mm. <laughs> so 
that's a bit on her, but yeah, but but it looked like the way they did it. Janine totally forgot about her her, her promise, right? She was looking down, well, not did, making did eye forget, contact. But it was just like, yeah. no, I'm keeping this for me. Yeah, but it turned out, you know, she did kind of wave her off, like very lightly shook, shook her head. But, so yeah, um, Janine 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 did not see that coming either. So like they were like no. both. Oh fuck. Yep. Yep. And uh, so back to the women being voted out again uh, but yeah what a what a scramble this whole episode just felt like it, stuff just blew up and it was going every which way well that's <laughs> just it that, you know everybody's safe until they're going to tribal council and then once you get to that well guess what nobody's safe everybody's on the block you know yeah, I mean, if you looked around at a couple of people who saw their names come up, they were like sitting there going, "Oh yeah, that first vote was one for you, one for you, one for you." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, there was no, there was, was no uh, organization here whatsoever. You know, and right at the merge too, right? So it's kind of like, who's doing that to me? You know? Yeah. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. No, no, no. It's uh, yeah. She actually said, "I feel like I was made for a Survivor." <laughs> You know what? That's that's like getting your significant other tattooed on your arm. Yeah, and she and she ended that with I'm, but I'm even better than I even thought. <laughs> Yikes! Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, you were because <laughs> someone yeah, smelled but, your bullshit. And yeah, sent and the you moment you yeah again, the moment you think you're safe, you should be reevaluating everything. Future survivor contestants. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh boy. Anywho. Uh, let's do some Tales of the Jedi. You watched the first three episodes. Uh, kind of cool seeing Ahsoka Tano as a baby, but is this not the worst mother in the world? Like, I know, I know. Uh, what, for taking her hunting? Tri- tri- tribe or primitive, but yeah, you basically put her in a papoose in front of you while you went hunting for beasts. I mean, am I crazy? Is this? I don't think they even did this in caveman times. Uh, you know what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Like I said, I watched it and I was kind of like, yeah. okay, I don't need to see this. I, I, okay, you were like ho hum and yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I, I don't care that Ahsoka was born and was pronounced a Jedi. You know, Kinda like did what uh, Baby Yoda did with the hand on the yeah on the beast there. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay. So I mean, like for me, I just kind of like whatever because you know what, I never watched any of the the animated series. So yeah, Ahsoka mm-hmm. is just a character that you know it's. It's Rosario Dawson in Mandalorian. Mandalorian. That's pretty much it for me. You know yeah. what I mean? I have no. Well, well. What about episode two? Did you that? Even though I'm not a fan of this animation, I clearly knew that was a young Qui Gon, right? Like it looked like him. I wasn't right? sure about Qui Gon, but Duko, I knew that was Dooku. Dooku's, a, Dooku's apprentice. Yeah. Well, no, he looked like they didn't say anything, but I do. I right away I went young Liam Neeson because they just they maybe they did just gave enough away, but so I wasn't I wasn't surprised, but it's. Um, I mean, uh, it, it was still nice to see that because we've never seen that in any in any movie. Right. Uh, Dooku's, you know, turning to the dark side or whatever, or slowly. Yeah, well, you could see him uh, being. Uh... Yeah. And then the third one that you saw was basically Dooku and Mace Windu. Uh, we see that. Just one Windu more is, step towards the dark side. Yeah, That's pretty Windu much is, it. is following the Jedi Temple rules, so to speak. And Dooku is not. So he so. Uh, so Mace Windu gets promoted to the Jedi Council, and he seems to be a little peeved about that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they did the uh, – well, they certainly hold their own when they got ambushed by the guards, but, um, but you know, uh, quite yeah, like very, sh- very, very short episodes. So, like, um, I, I, I enjoyed the Bad Batch a lot more because it yeah. told a story – like I don't need to see everybody's history to know that. Okay, I don't need to know when Dooku went went rogue. You know, like yeah, yeah. It doesn't change anything for me. Um, with that, now you you take something like the Bad Batch where we don't know anything about these characters, right? And you're telling a good story. Okay, there you go. It works. You know. I mean, if Andor told a good story, I probably wouldn't shit on it so much. Well, I'm sure you didn't shit on this next one, but I could be wrong. I'm guessing Welcome to Wrexham on Disney Plus gave you some shade of uh, Ted Lasso vibes. Am I wrong or am I right? Oh, yeah. But it, you know what? More more so than that, 
mm-hmm. it it um, it reminded me of my own athletic career. Um, how how so? Uh, just when you when you're on a team and and you're you're you're, you're just playing with a bunch of guys and you're you're just everybody just kind of like just gels together and you 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 hang on to that for a long time and you you know blood sweat and tears throughout throughout it all just to to bring everything up you know it doesn't matter which sport you play like for me i found that in football um north american football let me clarify that (laughs) um i found it in hockey and so on there's guys i played with and whatnot you know we battled together it's not war it's not you know military like but we still battled together and you know we we suffered those defeats together we suffered all that all that anxiety all that you know letting the people down letting the fans down letting people that were depending on you down your your teammates down you know all that kind of uh, anxiety and 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 thing, but then you k- pick yourself up and you go push forward to the next next game, and you know you're gonna make that work. And when it works, everybody's just like ah. So All right, well that that well, that really hit the show. It to what, me. what what'd you like about it? Ah, uh, you know what? I liked I liked everything about it. Honestly, like I was never uh, a European football fan, soccer fan, never. Well, neither were these two guys. Yet they, uh, still, you know, still bought bought a team, right? Yeah, and I mean, like, a, you know, when you you mentioned Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso, to me, is more about the people than the sport, right? So, mm-hmm. that's what they kind of gave us that the people and the sport were very much inseparable. I don't know if you got that that vibe. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think Ryan Reynolds is the one that changed the most over the course oh, of the absolutely. show. Like he really, really touched them, like the players and meeting the players, and especially when that ugh, that one player's baby is stillborn, and then oh you know, yeah, they, yeah, they give him a three year extension, you know, and the 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 town, the town really desperately needed this team, you know, they hadn't made I think finals in twelve years or something, so they were. They were on life support, basically, and then these yep. two guys, which everyone thinks is a joke when they're first told that Ryan Reynolds. Well, let's and, just say you get two, two Hollywood in. actors coming in to, to buy our, our club. What does that mean, right? Yeah. Even though they should have welcomed really anyone because up until then the fans owned it, but they didn't have enough money to pay for you know, they had a large bill of a hundred thousand something. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know where even Ryan Reynolds got the money. They had to redo the turf. I mean, you're watching like money just fly out the window. I don't know if because he put aviation gin on the shirts and TikTok, maybe oh, no, he, he, that he, money he, there. I mean, Oh no, he, he actually worried. He's he was actually be broke. A smart. No, no, not with the money he's made over the years. No, I don't. Well, think that's so. why Rob went to him. Right. Rob's got like, I got TV money, but I need, you know, who do I know? <laughs> That has movie yeah, movie money, money gin money. money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What else does he do? <laughs> TikTok money, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, those, those two were hilarious. I mean, they got to do a movie. Uh, I mean, um, and I love how when they announced there's like a Deadpool just showing up in costume oh, in yeah. the middle, middle of the town of Rexham. You know? <laughs> uh, Jesus. But, you know, like like I said, I, I loved the aspect that the town gets together for every game for you know they get in the pubs they get into the there they yeah they yeah because they interview the fans yeah. along the way and then they finally meet the fans and, and then of course the fans got them drunk as a skunk i mean <laughs> hung over slightly more hung over right that yeah. meeting the next day you knew that happened. and how about well, when they played wembley we actually do see ted lasso in wembley yeah I mean, how crazy is that please say you filmed something with them guys when you were there okay yeah, you're gonna yeah, let yeah. everyone down if you did not he was there you were there you were in england david beckham's there you could have did something oh yeah <laughs> John well, you Snow know, was and, there. <laughs> what, I, what, I, what, I, what, was, what I was cool, and you know, Ryan Reynolds turning to David Beckham, what do you think? You know, like yeah, oh yeah, should we go down? And he's like, yeah, I think you should go down. Yeah, like, exactly. Right after the game, you know. You know what? Yeah, who I better, mean, who better than to ask, right? I mean, the captain of Team England, right? Well, I mean, you know what? For me, uh, I mean, the the sports career that I had, I would want to be in there with the players. You know, like okay, if I'm the owner. No, I want to get in there and like tell these guys, "Hey, I'm still proud of you." You know, look what you've did. 
you went from basement to the championship game. That yeah. takes a lot. Yeah. You know, and you know, it probably wouldn't have been, a, been too perfect a Hollywood ending if they had gone into the Premier League. But, yeah. You know, they, they lose to Grimsby. So kind of, kind of like a Ted Lasso arc. Well, we know obviously this season's a greenlit for us. This season two, they're still owners. So, you know, it would it would have been you know okay. They, yeah. So I kind of like that they didn't right yeah. because now they got the team where they want it. They've spent the money. They got the top yeah. players there. And uh, oh, how about how about that Jimmy Kimmel episode where Rob has his wife on, who's oh. also an actress, <laughs> and she stops. The, look, look what happened. You looked right at me, and then you jumped you into Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds yeah. yeah. He's like, well, his defense. Well, who wouldn't? You know. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I mean, there there were wonderful moments in all this. I mean, for me. Uh, some of the favorites are just listening to the fans talk, the volunteers, and having Ryan and Rob come in and seeing these volunteers do these jobs and like, no, 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 you're on payroll now. You know, like... Yeah, like the woman... Uh, the woman in the wheelchair? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're on payroll now and like, you know, I'm, I'm having her organize everything because look at the great job she does. And just that in and of itself is such a great, great, um, great situation. You know, like, come on. These are people that are really, really just, you know, doing this out of, out of the love for their team and their game and, and such. And, you know, they should get paid, especially for everything they've been doing. And, like, you know, they bring in new sponsors. I mean, Ryan can just say, yeah, we're going to, Aviation Gym's going to sponsor them. But he still has to answer to other people in order to say how much gets sponsored, how much gets pushed through. And, I mean, you know, they other than just being celebrities on TikTok, they don't really have any connection to TikTok. So, they, they you know, it's whatever TikTok wants to give them. So, I mean... Obviously, it's 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 big money, it's big uh, exposure, especially with Ryan and Rob doing this documentary. So, I mean, they're it's everywhere. So, yeah, they are. they're not gonna they're not going to uh, not do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, oh man, it's just and like just listening also to some of the player stories too. You know, like Mullins. We got Mullen, Super Paul Mullen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is a guy who is killing it in, in what three levels up. And he's yeah, he brought, actually he, came down. He came I mean, down, obviously, but he didn't have to. I mean, he t he gets a bit of a raise, sure, but he he was at the top, and he came down to play. Yeah, but he came That's down great. to play, and his main reason coming down to play was to be closer to his children, to his to yeah. his son, and I'm like. Yeah. You know, everyone's saying, you know, he did it for the money. He did it for the... No, he didn't. The money the money was a bonus. He did it because he wanted to be closer to his family. And I'm like, oh, well, shit, man. That, that's, that, that is wonderful. You know, I, how, how much respect do you have for, for a player, yeah, you know? I, I hate to be that guy, but Grimsby, I'm sorry. Only one because their star goalie, you know, broke his wrist. Uh, I'm really sorry. Like, we, you know, there was like 18 episodes, so you got to see how good that guy was in, in the nets, right? Yeah. Between the pipes. So, uh, I, you know, no offense to the backup goalie, but I really think. Yeah, Dribble you know, did a, did, Dribble did a good what job. He did, he did a very yeah. good job. But, I mean, you know. We didn't have the experience of the other goalie. Yeah, who, but that's so I, that's sports, man. That is sports. You you know your best player takes a takes a takes yeah yeah. A but I'm, I'm just saying I think it would have been a different outcome had uh, Wrexham had their you know their regular star goalie. Uh, that's all. Now, that's yeah, all I'm you know what? And, did you did you see so many parallels between this and the first season of Ted Lasso? Yeah, yeah. That's why I thought you might like it um, because no, I, but like you know you, the, did, the goalie yeah. gets injured and he's out. <laughs> You know, yeah. Roy Kent gets out. You know, yeah. and tell me, did you not think that the the manager, Phil Parkinson, sounded like Roy Kent on the sideline? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Fuck were, off! <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were counting how many, uh, I forget the word they use. Enthusiasm. Counting how many fuck, fucks, yeah, how many enthusiasm. How many he goes, enthusiasm? Yeah, he's, a qui- he's the quietest guy you'd ever meet, but you, man, you get him on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> he's very oh, yeah, enthusiastic. No, no. <laughs> yeah yeah no there yeah it was enough for me to, to keep what to keep watching i thought okay I don't, you know this is great so i'm looking forward to season yeah. two of this but like you know it's it's everything right it's from the pub that's right outside the stadium you know the turf where yeah the, the one the one dvd store you got the one dv <laughs> what, yeah, what's that, the one dvd that doesn't rent oh it's probably green lantern right yeah <laughs> <laughs> They showed the briefest glimpse. I'll tell you how crazy I am. The briefest glimpse of a Wrexham mug with Deadpool on it. I scoured the internet and I can't find it. It was the <laughs> briefest glimpse. I'm like, oh, I want that mug. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure. I'm, well, they got the, with that. They got to get Disney and Marvels. Uh, up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. There. I mean, he put. Dead, I love how he put Deadpool on it on the wall, of the bar. And, yeah. You know, whereas the heart was it was the Wrexham, you know, symbol, yeah. which was a coat of arms, so which was pretty cool. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. It it it's it was it's a good watch. I mean, it's inspiring. You start to by the end of it, yeah, you're rooting for them and you you feel it in those in those uh in those last few games where they're trying. I mean, you're almost you you're almost yelling at the TV as much as Rob and and Ryan are yelling at the field, right? Yeah, yeah. You know. And I love I love how Rob he probably wasn't acting, but he was jealous when Ryan got to go to a, a game without him. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, really? Oh, he's hugging. He's hugging him. Oh, okay. oh two hugs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? For me, if I was one of the owners, I would want to be in the stands with the fans. Like, not an owner's box, but give me a couple of seats that's right there with everybody else, and I just want to be part of it, you know? Yeah. That, that, well, unfortunately, that would be unfortunately me. though, yeah, we have a bit of the, the hooliganism there and they showed that guy throwing a bottle on the woman. So mm. yeah, they, they uh, took, yeah, they took a whole episode to explain, uh, you know, yeah. well, you know what? ruining they, the sport. Yeah. Well, that, that's actually kind of smart, right? You know, you want to, you want to promote it, but you also want to make sure it's safe for everybody. So you kind of have to address it a little bit, Yeah, you know? But uh, no, like I said, it's uh, I, I I loved every little bit of it, you know, and uh, I I love seeing their frustration of trying to jump through hoops in order to get things done, like you know, fix the stands. Yeah, you know, like. But man, yeah, what? and the uh, and the uh, slow the way the paper work the trail follows in oh, England, like geez, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, you know, like Rob was gonna like kill someone when he yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> found out how long it would take, and they didn't really have a straight answer for him. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Especially considering the money they have have to dish out in order to get this fixed, right? Yeah. So. Oh yeah, yeah. And this is in pounds that they're talking. So I'm doing the calculation. Like, oh boy, this is uh, okay. Yeah. What was it for every hundred? It's not cheap. It was you know thirty thousand more. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So I mean, they're they're. You just got to have fun with it. I mean, they, they, these guys were, they were serious. And I like, you know what? I like how they tried to show as much of their commitment as possible by meeting with people, meeting with, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a celebrity tour, but it was kind of like, no, no, we, we want to help bring up this community. And you can see it, for, especially from Rob's perspective, being from Philadelphia, being a blue collar town, being, you know, everybody that loves the, their their team, you know, the, like the Eagles or the Flyers or whatnot, they all get in there. But you could also see, like, um, you know, just the the Wrexham people being the same kind of way. And I, you know, it's what's really, really, I guess you could say, heartbreaking is when you see how much the players react when they feel like they failed the town. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they, you could see they're upset. You know, that that one where they went down to the to the to the locker room afterwards and he says, no, 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 you guys didn't fail. Don't you hold your heads down. OK. You, you know, and I mean, he was he was very much talking like foot like a football player, you know, like. You know what? You get upset, you get angry, you get right back in there and get ready to pound next week, you know? So, 
yeah, no, nah, it was, it was, it was, the mentality is so different. And it was just like, man, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm all a few times I'm in tears watching this, you know, like, come on. Cause one, I've sort of lived it to a certain degree in my, in, in my, in my athletic career. And, um, so you, you know, one, it's bringing back the memories, but I, you know, I never really th- thought of soccer being that exciting right well, i always i always from i always love the crowd like because you'll never hear a crowd like it like on saturday if i'm flipping channels like, everyone is on their feet they're all they're all singing like it was that you know and it's obviously the most watched sport in the world you got eighty thousand stadiums it was yeah, yeah. you know the chaos and that always the, for, for me i always that that ex- aspect of it, it was always incredible like holy crap yeah i mean you don't get the same kind of enthusiasm uh here in north america but even though there are crowds just as large. Like you go, you go to any, any college football game, the, the stadium holds 80,000 and they're, they're, it's packed, but you don't see that. You don't hear the singing. You don't hear the, the, the chanting of names and whatnot. You only hear the cheer when they do yeah. something right. You know, you don't see the fans trying to pick up their team at the same time. It, it's, it's, I mean, you do, but you don't, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no song for any quarterback in the NFL, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, like Paul Mullins or Roy Kent, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you never, you never hear that. You never yeah, hear. Or, yeah. Their name's not mentioned and sung to the tune of Guantanamera uh, either. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> you know, like there's no cheering for a linebacker as he's getting ready to go and hit somebody like, come on. <laughs> that That's a whole, that's a whole different level of, of fandom, I guess you could say. Right. And I'm you sorry. know what? I, I, I'll, I'll admit it, it's contagious. I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. Yeah. We might start following Wrexham games. Okay. <laughs> Just to Who see knows? it. You know. Who knows? Well, I I don't think I can wait for season two. I might peek and start looking at the the stats, you know, the scores. <laughs> uh, so to spoil it for me, because I don't know if I could wait now that I'm curious to see, you know, how far they get. And <laughs> yeah. Oh so, yeah, I, I might be checking out a game or two, or at least following the scores. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like I said, you know, it's for for me. I mean, I played soccer. I knew it. I didn't think it was that exciting when I played, right? It was. You only get excitement is when it's in front of the net, and that's pretty much it. Which I mean, I mean that's what they mostly showed, was most of the most of the stuff going on in front of the net. Yeah, yeah, the, head, the headers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, so he's... so uh, thumbs up for you. Yeah, big time. Okay, big thumbs up for me. Well, let's get on to the so the Ant Man and Wasp trailer. Yeah. Um, was released, uh, showing them in the quantum realm, and I'm um, you know I don't want to get into the trailer too much. I was a little underwhelmed by the trailer, except for the look of Kang, which was pretty dead on Silver Age Kang, which I like, but I didn't think much of the trailer. Uh, well, that trailer, personally, uh, maybe there's more to come, but I I don't know. I well, I mean I mean, the fact that there's a whole other. Yeah, and you know, I mean, there's a whole, a whole other universe realm. under there that we didn't really explore yeah. when, when, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want, as I'm saying, I mean, sure, I'll watch it, but I didn't get, I didn't get as enthused as I did when I saw the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special trailer, as I'm sure you did as well. Actually, I like the Ant Man and, and Wasp trailer better. Really? Yeah. The fact the callback to Kevin Bacon you didn't like from the first. Well, movie? I thought that was, well, like, I probably. thought that was, that was funny. Yeah, but I mean, as far as you know. I, Comic book holiday specials are okay, but I still want to see well, the movies. I want to see the uh... yeah. Well, we haven't had one, so this is this is um, pretty cool. It's coming out November twenty fifth. Mm. I mean, sure, it was supposed to come out last year and COVID and all that, but yeah, we're finally getting it on November twenty fifth. Yeah, Ant Man's date has not changed. That'll be February. still February seventeenth. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you liked Knives Out on Netflix. I, I didn't really like it, but they've. Uh, release the date of the second one which will be december 23rd well, i thought knives out was okay it wasn't yeah no i didn't uh, I, I didn't like it at all but i know the majority of people did but uh this new one's called glass onion a knives out mystery 
And uh, with no trailer, just a poster, but uh, the date will be just two days before Christmas. Well, that kind of focuses more on Daniel Craig's character, right? He's kind of like going from... Yeah, I, I believe so, yes. Mystery yes. to mystery, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, then two days later, we still have The Witcher, Blood Origin. So uh, lots to watch in December. I know you don't watch Jack Ryan, but they released the uh, finally the date for season three, which will be December 21st on Amazon Prime. And, and next week... Weird Al. Weird Al? The Weird it's, Al it's movie is November 4th. It's coming to streaming? Yep. Or it's coming to Disney? It's coming to streaming. Uh, it's going to be on the Roku channel. Oh, okay. I don't have Roku. So I was hoping it would come to, since it was Hulu, I thought I thought it, oh no, it's not. Is it Peacock? It's Peacock, all right? Uh, it's Peacock or Hulu. I thought be, if it was Hulu, it would come to I'm Disney+. I'm not sure. I, uh, okay. They keep advertising it for the on the Roku channel. So. Oh, Okay. Well, we'll they also, <laughs> they also, I also saw a tra- trailer for Welcome to Chippendales, which is coming to Hulu on November 22nd. So it's very, very uh, Pam and Tommy vibes. So it looks like a good show about the guy who I didn't know was an Indian guy who <laughs> created Chippendales. So it's all how he got backstabbed and all that. And it looked very, very interesting. So I don't know if it comes on. Uh, I know it's a Hulu show, but we'll see if it, I don't know if it'll come out on Disney until it's all aired. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, but yeah. A lot, lots of stuff coming in November and December. That's for sure. No, yeah, no, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. What else? And uh, next week we should have a review of Titans. That's season right. Four. That's, well, that's, first episode that anyway. November third. Four. Yeah, third and blockbuster. The Netflix show also November third. So cool. We'll have a review of a of a few of those and maybe one or two Titans. I don't know how they're releasing it uh, yeah. on HBO Max. If it's one at a time. Usually yeah. it's one at a time. Uh, okay. Titans yeah, like I said, they're they're splitting the season up until six and six. So yeah, I don't think they're yeah. going to give us three right off the bat. No, 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 no. And blockbuster. Hey, that's that's another trip down memory lane for me. So I've worked in four four video stores growing up. Yeah. So it's, yeah, we'll definitely uh, check it out because I well I like the one of the main actresses. She was in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Melissa Fumero. So mm-hmm. and I you know I'm always intrigued with the last blockbuster left in the world. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to know there's one still out there. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it, is it still well, around or is it just... Uh... I believe it's still hanging on. I know that um, Russell Crowe uh, donated a lot of his stuff from movies to there. Like oh, they really? Have his, his breastplate from Gladiator and, and a glass case in there. Um, and I saw the yeah Netflix documentary on it, so... Uh, still, I'd, I'd, I'd still want to see a video. Well, yeah, somewhere. people plan their whole trip just to this town and this state they never heard, you know, just to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's all I got, sir, for entertainment news of this week. Yeah. Well, who? We, we did have one passing. Uh, Jerry Lee uh, Lewis. Yep. Yeah. Passed yeah. away at 87. First, first, first goose, now him. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, goose. Yeah. Well, great balls movies. of fire. Yeah. You can never explain how those millennials knew all the words to the song and Top Gun 2. <laughs> but, hey, some things you just don't question. Shut up, okay? Just enjoy it for what it is. Well, I mean, you you, you, could, you could see the thread because Goose used to sing it to his son. Yeah, no, it's how the other – the article was how the other – how somehow knew the words to the song, you know, when they wouldn't have been growing up with that. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I've been up saying shut up, enjoy it for what it yeah. is, stop overthinking it. Yeah, oh, I mean – It was a good, it was a good moment. When, okay. when, when he started playing, obviously Phoenix knew what he was what, what he was doing because he's obviously done that before. Mm-hmm. So if he's done that before and – well, then they say, well, what song is this? And then they, you know, Spotify it and listen to it and mm-hmm. – watch the video on youtube and go oh wow this is a cool song how come i never heard of this before because yeah we- i know i we before that movie was even made i was hoping they would do that scene so i was i was happy with it yeah. you know like yeah. to see goose's kid oh i mean you know, especially dressed the same way he was yeah exactly the hawaiian yeah. shirt open yeah with the, the, the tan yeah. little mustache tank top yeah. with the sunglasses on yep yep perfect yeah perfect no movie. i mean i'm still re-watching parts of that movie you know like Every time I see see every time I see a clip on my YouTube feed, uh, yeah, I gotta click on it. You know, especially the the clip where they they steal the F fourteen. Oh yeah, the big moment. You know, he's supersonic. In what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> An F fourteen, 
no, it can't be Maverick. <laughs> you know, it's like, who else has the balls to steal an F-14 <laughs> right out from the the nose of their enemy? You know? Yeah, no, I, I've... There's so many clips of this this movie that I still watch. The, the you know, Maverick uh, one schooling the youngins. And then... Uh, when he runs the, the the runs the ridge himself just to prove that it could be done. And then the whole end fight scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, sir. You want to bring us home with that beautiful baritone voice of yours? Yes, gang. This has been Butcher Bay Rejects. Catch us next week. I'm Mark. I'm Greg. See you next week, nerds. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. You can find us on all our social media. You can search Butcher Bay Rejects on YouTube, at Bay Rejects on Twitter, at Butcher Bay Rejects on Facebook, as well as at Butcher Bay Rejects on TikTok. You can also find us on our website, ButcherBayRejects.com. And you can find us on all the podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Alexa TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and Pandora. Thank you for listening, and tune in again. (laughs) 